Hi, I'm Matt Winning at winningstrength.com, and today we're going to go over some key components to shape your programming. I know that this is a huge issue for a lot of you, and we all are left confused on what to do and how to do it. Well, I think today we're going to cover a lot of this stuff and help you guide your own training. The first step that we need in this components to shape our programming is we got to master the warm up, right? So now for me, this is huge. And this is also why I created winning warm ups. So if you don't know what that is, go look at some other videos and we're actually going to shoot some more today on it. But mastering warm ups is huge because if we do warm ups correctly, we're going to potentiate proper muscle tissue. We're going to warm up the tissue and get the neurons firing faster and harder. And we're also going to fix form that's going to come in the future core lift that's going to happen probably in the next 15 to 20 minutes. So as you can see, the warm ups are a huge factor in making sure we're shaping our program correctly. So do not forget that what you do in the beginning can shape everything of what comes later. The next thing is progressive overload comes in many types of forms and many types of shapes and sizes. And what does that mean? That means for us to get better, we constantly have to do something a little harder, but that doesn't necessarily mean heavier. So what are we talking about here? Well, if we talk about max effort work, it would mean we put a little bit more weight on the bar, right? That's progressive overload. But what if we do an extra round of warmups? What if we do an extra round of accessories? What if we add another muscle group in to the training session? Is that not overload? And my answer is yes. So if you look at overload as in volume, intensity, duration, shortening rest periods, or lengthening rest periods, you're changing the progressive overload of the workout. So what that means is that don't think that just getting heavier is getting you stronger. Sometimes doing all the other small things and modifying that is actually making you better as well. So be cautious that you don't think of progressive overload as just going heavier. So the next big thing is stop maxing out all the time. Remember, there's one big saying that I say to myself and all my clients and all the people I deal with, are you building new strength in this workout or are you testing old? So if you go up to 100% max, you're actually testing all the work you've done in the past six months, year, or longer. But in reality, if you're building strength, then your mindset needs to be towards building strength, meaning you might want to save some in the tank and you may not want to go as heavy and start learning how to slowly progress yourself to a new PR. This becomes very, very hard for most people because when you have to go into a normal gym, the, 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 the contest is to max all the time. What did you bench? Well, I want to bench more than I did last week. But what we have to understand is that strength is not linear, meaning that just because we did something one week doesn't necessarily mean we're 10 pounds stronger the next. But if we know that, then that means we're not going to be constantly testing. We're going to be working on building. So at my strongest, I was only ever testing a new max at most every six months because that's how long it really takes to make big progress. The next thing that we have to be aware of is that nutrition matches the goal. We don't take a 69 Chevelle with a 500 inch big block and put 87 octane from Speedway in it. The same thing holds true with our bodies. If you are trying to put on muscle mass, you're trying to be stronger. It's not what the natural human organism wants to do. So don't think that that's possible by putting in subpar fuel in your body, meaning that your training and your nutrition have to be in the same importance in your daily life. When you eat, how you eat, and what you eat are super important to making progress. And I find that this particular position or part D is probably one of the most confusing and misguided parts for most people, especially in the beginning stages of their lifting career. They think if they just put the time in the gym that they're going to see the results. And actually, if you're super weak, that might be true. But then once you hit a plateau, a lot of times the plateau is coming because your nutrition doesn't match your goal. So with hitting on that same particular point, protein intake needs to be at least one gram per pound of lean body mass. I like to use lean body mass to calculate my calories and intakes because that's all I want to feed. I don't want to feed my fat mass. So for example, if I weigh 200 pounds in lean mass, I would have to know that with a DEXA scan, um, hydrostatic weighing or bioprint or skin calipers if the person is really good. If I weigh 200 pounds lean with no body fat, probably meaning my body, my body weight could be upwards of 220 to 260, I'm going to need at least 200 grams of protein to sustain that type of body mass. Now, some people might argue that they need way more than that, but in my opinion, I think that that's pretty close 
So I weigh 240 on the test. I try to eat 240 grams of protein per day. You break that up into five meals, you're talking, you know, 40, 50 grams per meal. So that's pretty hard to do on a consistent basis. So I find that if you try to get one gram of protein in per pound of lean mass, it really starts to regulate the type of foods that you're going to take in. You can't eat 200 grams of protein in potato chips, right? So the last big factor of this particular scenario is maintain recovery guidelines. So when I'm programming my training, my recovery is also put into that programming. I program my recovery. Why? Because I have to force it at this point. 40 years old, 30 years of training hard. My body, it's almost more important of how I recover than how I train anymore, okay? And for at any level that you are particularly trying to be good at, recovery is going to become an issue, but it's also one that we don't talk about enough and that nobody wants to hear. We've all been sold intensity. We've all been sold push harder, you know, be a badass. Well, in reality, learning how to recover is the ultimate badass. So what does this mean? It means on off days that sometimes just sleeping is not enough. Sometimes just, just you know, eating clean is not enough. Sometimes we've got to go to hot, cold contrast showers. We've got to use massage guns. We've got to do all these other things to help speed up the recovery process because hopefully every 72 hours we're reattacking the muscle tissue. Well, if that muscle is fresh every three days, we can train way harder than if we're beat up and still sore. So recovery becomes the issue because as I say all the time, it's not what you can do, it's what you can recover from. So today we've covered some key points on what we need to do to enhance and shape our programming. So join the Patreon channel and we're gonna go over some more key points and go more into depth in this situation on how to get better and how to do it long term. Because let's face it, for most of us, it's gonna be a long journey to get world class or way stronger than we are. Do not sell yourself with these 30 day programs and trying to get better in only five, six, eight weeks. This is a long term process and this is how you're gonna do it. So I'll see you on Patreon.